one of the things that with this is you're always trying to get across and reestablish you know, the theoretical side of, of what we do. And I'm a huge, huge believer that we need to study what other sports do. You know, what we need to study what soccer does, we need to study what football does, we need to study what tennis does, um, and apply a lot of their teaching techniques to what we do. Because we're our sport, right? We just have to, we just have an interesting sport because we're, um, we have another species involved, right? And something that doesn't speak English, um, something that doesn't even speak human, and we have to find a way to communicate with this species, right, in order to be able to play the game that we're playing. And that's a huge important part. We, we keep, a lot of the times, the big problem that ends up happening with students is they're attracted to this sport because of the cross country. They're attracted to this sport because they want to compete. And that becomes the driving force is the competition. And in the end, they end up learning how to compete before they learn how to rock. And that's a huge important part about what we're talking about with horses, is that the first step is how do we communicate with them. The second thing is how do we use that communication to be able to and improve them and, and be able to get into a place that we can start to play the games that we want to play. The game of dressage, um, which should always be Two things, number one, communication, and number two, creating a better attitude. So that's the job, right? The quicker with his feet, the more he's suffering, the more elastic, he, you keep away and keep away he's thinking, um, so that I can solve the puzzle. And I very much think that when we're show jumping or when we're doing cross country, we're out there to solve the puzzle. And do you have the pieces of the puzzle to be able to solve it? And I can guarantee you, I mean, if you've ever built a 5,000 piece puzzle and you get down to the end and you realize that you have 4,998 pieces, it's a little frustrating. And not only is it a little frustrating, right, but you can't get the job done. Well, it's the same thing here. If you don't have the pieces of the puzzle, how do I put the puzzle together? And I can guarantee you, it waits until the biggest competition that you have the most important competition that has you lived your life, and then it tells you that you don't have a piece of the puzzle on TV. <laughs> uh, we've all been there. We've all done it. You know, where suddenly the thing didn't work because you didn't have a piece of the puzzle. And so the training, you have lots of different aspects to it. Short-term goals, long-term goals, and what you're applying for. And from a coaching point of view, we have to always keep going back to other sports. We have to always go back to how do you teach people how to learn? Right? And how do people learn about themselves? And I really believe that it's in steps. The first thing of any sport has to be taught as technique. How do I hold a golf ball? How do I kick a soccer ball? How do I hold a football to throw it? How do I hold a tennis ball? The first thing has to be that technique. This is the way that I swing. This is the way I swing a golf club. This is the way I swing a uh, tennis racket. This is how I hold and this is how I throw. And the more that you go up the levels, but not all really, really top athletes, right, end up working going all the time. The higher that they go, the better they become, the more that they go back and work on the basics and fundamentals. So that never gets, never lets go. So the first side of it has to be the technique of what we teach. In riding, position, absolutely. How do we use our aids, the aids that, are, that somebody understands what those aids are, how do I communicate? That always has to be number one and always has to be going back to. So the first way of level of learning ends up being technique. The second thing has to be theory. The theory of how the game of soccer is played, the theory of how the game of football is played, the theory of how do I use in a game of tennis, how, do, how am I going to start to place that person just so that suddenly I'm getting to a place four shots from now that I'm creating a limit because I've got this person out of position and then that opens up the course. The theory of the game, and I really believe in our world, and more eventing than most other ones, I'm sorry to say, is that the theory is weak. 
The theory is very weak. And the theory is weak on the coach's level. Because if the theory was strong on the coach's level, hopefully the theory would be able to be passed on. Okay? And this theory is not new. Most of the theory is several hundred years old. Because as our sport changes and as our technology changes and our jumps change and we use different materials and we have all these new exercises and all that stuff, what really hasn't changed? The horse. The brains don't work that much different than they did six million years ago. Right? And so with the huge changes in the sport come from medicine, absolutely, sports medicine. Uh, nutrition. These are the changes, but the training side and the horse's psychological side has not changed a whole ton. You don't see horses going running faster than they did. You see humans running faster. You don't see horses running that much faster than they did a hundred years ago. And so the theory that's out here that's got written down, a lot of it you can find from several hundred years ago, but certainly you can find it as gets written down here in the last 150 years. And it's all on the internet now. And so it's easily accessible. And so you've got to find it. And so well, as somebody learns the sport, first is technique, the second is theory, and that leads to the third section of how somebody learns, which is instinct. And instinct is the ability to be able to react without thinking of it. And if you think about driving a car, you drove, you drive a car now, and it's the last thing you think of. Because you're eating, you're on the phone, you're beating the kids in the back seat, you're yelling at somebody, you're not testing, obviously. It doesn't happen. But you're doing all of these type of things, and you're driving a car. And you're moving the car, using your steering wheel, you're just going right and left all the time. You're, you will take your foot, and put your foot on the accelerator, take it off the accelerator, put it on the brake. You don't think right foot off, foot right foot here. You don't think right hand left hand. You, you don't think that. Now, remember the first time you drove a car? It's hard now for the kids because kids drive everything from the time that they're 18 months old. But, but if you think about the first time you drove a car, you didn't know what to look at. Kind of steering wheel. You, know, you got, like, you, you, we all remember that going through school, right? You kind of, you didn't know what to look at, right? And everything was jerky, right? You're looking at the steering wheel, you're looking at the speedometer, you're looking at the road, you're looking at the sign, you're looking at whatever, and somebody yelling at you at the same time. And so you didn't, there was so much information, you didn't know how to separate it. Now when you drive the car, it doesn't even get to the front part of your brain. It stays in the subconscious the whole time. That's instinct. And how wouldn't we like to get our riding to the point where that if you think about it, you're late. If you think about it, you're late. And so the instinct part is where we are all trying to head. And as coaches, it's very, very important that you think about your training, that you are trying to set up that instinct. Because as most of us, teach somebody that, while well, quote unquote, call an amateur, 95% of the business is about teaching an amateur. Right? I'm the lucky one. I get to deal with those guys. That's lucky. And spoils you luck. Because they've already gone through so many different levels, right? And they're talented, and they've got great instincts, and so the job is to kind of just keep things on the road. These guys were already driven. Yeah, they already want to improve. They already want to be competitive. I get spoiled rotten because that has become 95% of my world. I have to make sure that I don't change my teaching and make sure that I'm not teaching or helping those guys, which is helping, not teaching. Helping those guys want to go down and go to an amateur where you're teaching. Because what the level of what they're going to understand and the level of what an amateur is able to do is going to be far apart because they've already gone through the system. Does that make sense? And that's a big, huge mistake in coaching. So you teach above a level. Makes you sound fantastic. But they can't do it. 
They can't do it, or sometimes you'll get it done, but they can't replicate it. And if they can't replicate it, you haven't done your job. They can't replicate it on their own. You haven't done your job. Not they have. They have to have the responsibility, yes, but you have to make sure that you get it into a place that you replicate it. And so instinct is the place where the amateurs end up. That's, their, that's almost their limit. That's our job as coaches is to get them up to that level, to that, level that instinctual level, so when they're starting to stop, that they're starting to react without thinking about it, because it's safe, we make it safe, we make it fun, uh, we make it intellectually enjoyable, and they're, they're having a really good time. The next two levels, you have to become a student. And a student, multiple horses, spending lots of hours in the saddle, because really the next level becomes about intuition and philosophy. And intuition and philosophy means that you are starting to get fundamental beliefs in training horses that are unchangeable. One of the examples is, how many, does anybody play golf? So if you get a couple of people play golf, there's a couple different ways to hold a golf club. Right? There's like two or three different grips that you can see pros do it, everybody can do that. You have to know the reason, not just that you, you need to know the reason why you hold a golf club. Yeah? You need to know the reason of a fundamental belief uh, that is unchangeable in training horses. Mind, communication. Number one, communication. Some people, it's about much more about the instinct of getting the horses to try to leave them alone and get them to react, especially in jumping. So there are fundamental beliefs that takes a lot of theoretical thought process yeah, to be able to get to the place where it's unchangeable in your mind. The techniques can change, but the philosophy of it doesn't change. And then the last part, so we talk about your five levels of learning, where we talk about technique, and then we talk about theory, and then we talk about instinct, that leads to that intuition philosophy, which is now you're becoming a student of the job and getting more into the professional side of the job. When I say professional about that, that's all your study. Is that the last part is imagination. As unteachable. Right? You're now guiding. As somebody starts to see the field differently, they see this ring differently than they see it in, in, in another way. Right? They walk into a ring like this and like this is mine. And they see the line to the corner possibly differently so that suddenly I'm, because of my training, da 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 da, da coming through this line and I'm coming into that transition and I can do it one shot faster than anybody else. And I can come back one stride later than anybody else. And I start to play. This becomes a playground. Imagination. Wayne Gretzky. I had to put that in the camera. <laughs> but, I usually say Michael Jordan, but I'll say up here, I'll say Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> so when we think about a guy like that, right? A Michael Jordan, uh, Wayne Gretzky, you know, Tiger Woods when he was playing this at his top of his game, where such a better in tennis where suddenly the that's just different. That's just different. You, sh you shake your head. Now, you ask somebody that guy right before they're going to do whatever they're going to do, they wouldn't be able to tell you because it's such an instinctual level, right? They've set, they, they set the field up of how they want it to go. And so that becomes, that's the last part. All right, so we're really talking about, and what I really believe on how people learn sports is technique, theory, instinct, intuition or philosophy, and then, and then we talk about imagination. And if you talk about it that way, everybody can really kind of decide where they are. Yeah, that's the point about sometimes breaking up the categories is where are you? Right? I'm, I'm weak in theory. Well, fix it. There's ways to fix it. Right? I'm, I'm 